morning all and today I want to connect a 10 watt LED to a 12 volt power supply in the simplest and cheapest way possible. So let's just quickly go through what we've got here. Obviously a 10 watt LED and uh, the car cigar lighter plug in order to get it connected to 12 volts. Now the other things we've got are a driver unit because LEDs can't be connected directly to 12 volts. We've also got a heat sink and fan because LEDs get hot, particularly these high power LEDs, and I've got a few nuts and bolts. So let's first look at the LED. This is a typical 10 watt LED. It has nine individual one watt LEDs mounted on a metal base. Now you could argue that this is a nine watt LED but you can in fact overdrive these LEDs ever so slightly and put a total of 10 watts of power through this thing. Um, these are wired in three columns of three LEDs in series. So you've got this column, this column, and this column all paralleled, but in each column, the three LEDs are in series. Now, 10 watt LEDs are fairly cheap these days. I bought this item, it's five 10 watt LEDs in a cool white color, nine to 11 volts. Um, now this cost £2.92, which makes them just a little bit under 60 pence each. Now do check when you're buying your 10 watt LED that they have a forward voltage of around nine to 12 volts because there are some others that look very similar to these, but they will have a forward voltage of around 27 to 30 volts and they're not suitable for this particular project. Now, what's to stop us connecting the LED directly to 12 volts and just plugging it in? Well, what will happen is the LED will instantly destroy itself. The incredibly fine wires, which you can just about see at the top of the LED, spot welded onto the metal, will just act like a fuse, melt and disconnect the LED and it'll never work again. Having said that, it is quite happy being connected to a nine volt battery. So why does that work? But 12 volts would fry it. I mean, there's only three volts difference. And the answer is because a diode, an LED, has a non-linear voltage current curve. So whereas it starts off growing in current very slowly, when it gets to around about 10 volts, this changes very dramatically and it shoots up like that. And in fact, it never, gets to 12 volts. So in fact, if you extend this line up to the point where it reaches this 12 volt line, you're at huge amounts of current, far beyond what the internals of the LED will tolerate. So that's why it will fry at 12 volts, but it's happy at 10 volts, and it's also completely happy at nine volts on the nine volt battery. The other problem is that at nine volts, the LED is not very bright and we want to set this LED to the maximum possible brightness. So LEDs need to be current regulated using a current limited LED driver. Now that sounds quite complicated, and in fact it is fairly complicated the way this thing works, but fortunately it's not expensive. So here's a 10 watt LED driver, uh, identical to the one that I've got. It's on eBay and it's described as power driver for one times 10 watt LED lamp light, 900 milliamps and with a 12 volt input. An MR16 is the type of lamp that this driver is normally used in. It's uh, $2.75 free shipping and that's from Satis Lead. And I will put uh, links to these items in the description. So I'm gonna solder the driver onto the LED now the first thing we need to check is polarity. This LED is marked uh, positive and negative. There's a plus there and there's a minus on that side there. So I need red to positive. So let's just tin those connections. And then I'll attach the wires onto there. So red wire goes to positive and the white wire to negative, and that's the driver attached to the LED. Now to test this, I'm gonna use this booster pack. This is a car booster pack, but it has a 12 volt DC uh, accessory output. 
So I'm going to plug a cigarette lead into there and use that to uh, take 12 volts. Now the other end of the cigarette lead is on this 2.1 millimeter socket. So I'm just going to plug that onto here. Now it doesn't actually matter which way I connect it because it has four diodes here, which is a bridge rectifier. And that means that you can put positive and negative either way around on these connectors. Um, but I'll put positive on the side where positive is coming out just uh, because that's logical. And then if I join these two connections, we get the LED lighting up. Now that's the LED lighting up at full brightness. 12 volts is being transformed down probably to around 10 volts. But more importantly, the little chip on here is measuring the current that's flowing and keeping that constant. And that's what enables it to drive the LED at full power, but not to destroy it. Now, if you drive a 10 watt LED at full power for any length of time, my connection's a bit rubbish here, it will get hot. And that's starting to get pretty warm. In fact, quite hot on the back. And so to draw that heat away, we need a heat sink, but you'd need quite a big heat sink if it weren't for the fact that there's a fan attached to this one. So we can use quite a small heat sink, keep the fan running. Now conveniently, this is a 12 volt fan, and then the LED will be kept cool. Now these little VGA heat sink and fan units are quite cheap. This is described as a two pin 50 millimeter DC 12 volt VGA card cooler heatsink fan and it's just 99p uh, free shipping from Synody. Now I'm just going to remove these two plastic posts because um, I want this thing to sit flat on the bench while I drill holes for the LED. So let's get those two out and that sits nice and flat. So let's put the LED roughly in position and mark some points where I'm going to drill holes to mount this LED onto this heatsink. That one drifted a bit. Oh no, that looks about right. Okay, let's drill those. Now I've just taken the fan part out of the heatsink while I drill these holes. So let's get them drilled. I'm going to go in with two millimeters. Two millimeter drill initially. Okay, and then let's open these out with a three mil. Now I've got to countersink these quite deeply because the um, countersunk screws have very little clearance between the heat sink and the underside of the fan. It sits very close down there. So let's get those countersunk. Yeah, probably a little more than that, but I'll finish that off now. So that looks fine. There's just about enough clearance um, underneath the fan assembly for the heads of the countersunk screws to fit under there. So now let's mount the LED onto this top flat surface. So tiny little bit of heat sink compound. Don't need much. It's just to fill the gaps between the uh, LED and the heat sink. There probably aren't many, so that's probably enough. And then mount the LED onto there and put some nuts on it. So the LED is bolted to the heat sink um, with four nuts and bolts. And I've also mounted the whole assembly on a small piece of wood on these uh, with these pillars and you can see I've left uh, plenty of clearance underneath for the air to flow up through the fan and blow out through these vents to keep the heat sink cool. Now the next thing I want to do is just mount this driver and I think the easiest way is just to drill a couple of holes for these pins and push it down into those holes. So there's the LED driver just pushed into two holes. It's the only way I can think of mounting it. It doesn't have any mounting holes of its own. Now the next thing I need to do is connect the fan wires and also um, the cigar lighter wires to the input side of the driver. So both positives and negatives will connect onto these two pins that I've pushed into that hole. 
So let's cut this connector off. I'll keep that connector. That could come in handy at some point. I'm going to cut it off fairly close to the driver and then solder that onto those pins like so, like that. And so here's the finished assembly. Now you can see that um, my input wires coming from the cigar plug go to the two uh, pins on the driver and they go carry straight on to the fan. So 12 volts comes into the driver, also goes to the fan. And then the output from the driver goes to the LED because that's the current controlled part of the circuit. So with my cigar plug plugged into the 12 volt output, let's switch that on and watch the LED. And there it is. There's the 10 watt LED running at full brightness. So we assume around 10 watts. The fan is running. You can probably hear that. And the driver is controlling the 12 volts, transforming it down to, as I say, probably around 10 or so volts, but holding the output of the LED constant. Now, I need to check whether this fan heatsink gets hot. So I'm going to leave this connected and switched on for a while to make sure that the fan cooling does indeed work. And uh, I'll update you in a few moments. So this has been on now for at least 10 minutes while I tidied up the workshop and the heat sinks just barely warm. So it's keeping cool just fine. Now this may not be the most practical layout for the components but uh, you can rearrange things a little bit to suit your application. But it just shows the way it's connected, power coming in here, going straight to the fan, through the driver and onto the LED. And it achieves the two main things that you need to do to run this sort of LED from 12 volts, a current controlled regulator and some sort of cooling system. And uh, this whole thing, including this cigar plug and cable, cost around four pounds.